So you'll find, I find that a new way to sit if you haven't done it before is you take your block and you put just a little cushion of the blanket over top and then there's also enough cushion of the blanket. So block is here, blankets in front. So it's kind of just like a long skinny hot dog shape with your blanket. That way, when you come to sit on your block and cross at your ankles or bring your feet in, however you want to sit, it's a little bit more comfortable on your ankles. So you just take your time, wiggle in, settle around. Never want to hurry yourself with the props. And then before closing your eyes, just take a few shoulder rolls up, back and down. Move it all around, move your jaw around, your nose. Maybe take a little bit of movement with your head side to side. Just to start to move a little bit of stuck energy if there's anything, or if your body still feels a little stiff from sleeping. And then just a little side to side movement. So a little side bend to the left, come to the center, a little side bend to the right. And take it more from your hips rather than your head. So you start to feel a little bit into your rib cage. One more time, each side. And then just a very gentle twist. Left hand, right side. Look over to the right. Release on an in-breath and then come to center. Other side, right hand, left thigh. Turning from your belly button. Again, release on an inhale. One more time, each side. That way you're just, again, moving any stuckness or staleness so you can ah, sit a little more comfortably. Close your eyes and notice how just that handful of small movements helps you sit with more ease. Notice if you can breathe with more ease. That might mean a little bit slower for you. It might mean a little bit longer, maybe on the exhale this morning. It might mean longer on the inhale. Or breath ease for you this morning maybe more in your belly or relaxing your belly as you breathe. Or paying more attention to your lower back as you breathe. Or feeling your breath a little higher up in towards your heart. Here, just taking quiet, fairly still moments for yourself. Basically, just rolling out the welcome mat to your body, to whatever swirling around in your mind. And just stepping on that welcome mat and coming into your breath. No matter what's been on your mind, just shifting your attention. What's happening with your breath right now? Where can you make the edges of your breath just ever so slightly smoother?
just a few more moments here. Again, maybe you can even visualize yourself rolling out a welcome mat to your practice this Friday morning. all parts of yourself. Physical, mental, and emotional. Keeping everything the same, just allow your hands to come towards the floor. Maybe your fingertips touch. Eyes can stay closed. Inhale, reach your arms out and open until your fingertips touch overhead. And then exhale, just feel that slow fall in your arms. Taking your time. Two more slow ascent of your arms floating up over your head just until your fingertips touch. And then exhale, allowing them to float down. Last one, opening your eyes on this inhale, slightly tipping your head back, gazing upwards. And then exhale, bringing your chin down towards your chest, a little stretch into the back of your neck. Good, inhale, pick your head up. Slowly come off of your block, if you've got one, set it to the side. And then you're gonna move your blankets so you still have something to sit on. And if you don't have a blanket, you can use a couch cushion or anything like that. Starting with your right leg out to the side, sole of your left foot on your right inner thigh. And with your left arm back behind you. So John Yushir Shasana. And you're always welcome to take a deep bend in the right knee. And just a little side bend over to the left side. Inhale up and over to the right side. Inhale, come up, exhale, up and over to the left, nice. Inhale, up, exhale, over to the right. Inhale, up, exhale, over to the left again. And then this time as you go to the right, stay over. Bend into your left elbow and just a slight chest opener. Maybe your eyes turn up towards the ceiling. And your next exhale, lean down towards your straight leg a little tuck of your chin and flex your right toes up towards the ceiling. Big breath out. Good, inhale, lift your chest up. Now the only thing that's gonna change is your left leg. So your right leg stays as it is, left foot comes up, flat to the floor, and then your inner knee and the big toe side of your foot come down. So you're gonna feel this in your hip socket. Yeah, there you go. Slowly start to walk your hands forward. Doesn't, you don't have to touch your foot. Exhale, leaning towards your straight leg. So you'll feel it back of the right leg and left hip socket. Breathe in, exhale. Try to really relax into this hip. Just feel heavy in your bones right there. One more breath in and out. Inhale, lift your torso. Left hand, right thigh, and then right arm up and over, leaning towards your left side. Ooh. And again, see if you can just kind of drop all weight of your left hip towards the ground. Mm -hmm. Inhale, arms come up, hands go back behind you just so you can lean, easily straighten both legs out in front, and then take left leg over, right sole of the foot. It's basically seated tree pose. Janushir Shasana, right hand down, left arm up and over to the side. Inhale, brings you through to the center, exhale up and over to the left. Slowly up and over, back to the right side. Yep, inhale up and over, back to the left side. Make sure your left toes are flexed. Exhale to the right. And then as you come over to the left again, pause here. Bend through your right elbow, just a very slight chest opener, leaning back, a little turn of your head. A lot of breath in and out. Breathe in. Exhale, shift your shoulders 
over so your chest is facing your straight leg and you might need to like wiggle around move around you never want to feel stuck somewhere and then exhale a little hinge at your hips leaning good inhale bring yourself up right foot comes to the floor take a moment and then the inner right knee your inner right big toe comes down and it may feel wildly different side to side and again, you'll probably feel it most likely right here as you still lean forward towards your left leg. Relax your shoulders down, right? Bend your elbows, exhale. And just see what's happening for you on this side. Similar, massively different, slightly different. Just take some observations. Ooh, relax your jaw, drop your shoulders, and then that might help you to just release some holding in your hip, right? Jaw, shoulders, hips, have like all these little invisible strings connected together. One more breath in and out. <sighs> Inhale, bring yourself up. Right hand, left thigh, left arm up and over, now leaning towards your right foot. Mm-hmm. Good, inhale, come up. Use your left hand to pick your bum up, remove any blanket, block, prop. Keep your right leg where it is, add your left foot into this pinwheel shape. Hmm? Good, now it's okay if your right glute is slightly off the floor. You wanna be pretty straight up and down with your shoulders and your chest. We're just gonna pick up that right foot, but not using your hand, you're just gonna lift it up and put it down. And it literally might go a quarter of an inch off the floor, right? And notice how we all kind of go, oh, I'm gonna lean as far over to the side and I'm gonna pick my foot up. Again, trying to stay upright. If you need to do a little lean to the side, all good. Just give it two more times. Feel like, oh, hip muscle awareness. One more. Nice. Keep your left shin where it is, cross your right shin in front, and then take a little walk out forward with your hands. Feel where you just put the effort in, drop your chin. Just a simple cross-legged seat with a fold. Reach, reach, reach out through your arms. And if your shoulders feel that tightness, take your arms into a wide V instead. Big exhale. Full breath in. Full breath back out. One more. Or to lift up through your chest, right shin stays where it is, inner left knee comes behind, so pinwheel, sometimes it's called deer pose, back into that hip socket, as upright as you can be, a small lean to the right spine, and then pick up your left foot and down, left foot and down, and on this side, I personally have less range of motion to lift, unless I really lean to the side, so it's just a slight lean, a little lift, using your glute muscles to help strengthen around your hip. One more. Good, right shin stays where it is, left shin crosses in front. And again, if your shoulders are tight, take your arms into a wide V as you fold forward, tucking your chin, feeling smooth in the back of your neck. And notice if a breath out helps in any way, shape, or form. Inhale and exhale. It's simple, but it's quite powerful. Use an inhale to come up. Turn so you have the length of your mat, just depending on your orientation. And you're going to roll down all the way onto your back. Heels towards your bum. Press through the soles of your feet. Inhale, come right into a bridge pose. Upper arms walk together, fingers interlaced. Woo, and feel all that musculature move down away from your ears. So now into some hip strength and shoulder release. Maybe your feet stay as they are. Maybe they go a little wider or even a slight turnout in your toes. And if you feel a lot of pressure in your feet, 
or your lower back. Give a little squeeze of your glutes towards your center so you use those outer hip muscles and those glute max muscles to help you stay elevated. Maybe your upper arms get a little more wiggled closer together like they like each other. Knuckles of the hands stretch towards the heels. Two breaths to go. And remember, try and breathe in your nose. Breathe out however you'd like. Slowly release your shoulders, unlock your fingers, and roll down. Yeah. Make sure your head is towards the top edge of your mat. Left leg up towards the ceiling. Right knee bent like a little flamingo, so you're on your back. Right knee bent, left foot up, and just take a couple point and flexes through your feet. Oh yeah, my feet. They need attention, they need movement. They need breath, all the way from your heels, your ankles, to your toes. Good, and then just choose where you want your feet. You might want them flexed, pointed, or flaunted. Interlace your fingers right below your right knee. Breathe in. Exhale, round it back. You're going to come up, right foot to the floor, chest lifted. Yeah. And then exhale, roll back, round your spine, come back into that flamingo shape. Move your jaw, breathe in. Exhale, come on up with a little bit of a rounded back. Yes. And some of us might need some momentum. Round it back, leg up. You can use your left leg as a little bit of a pendulum, but try not to get crazy with swinging it around. You just want to use a little bit of push forward into your hands with your right shin. Yeah, one more time. Roll it down. Foot comes up. Exhale. Bring it on up. Take it into an open twist. So you're going to turn towards your straight leg. So right arm on the inside of your right knee, turning towards your straight leg. Different way to twist. Still lifted in your chest. Nice, everybody. And it's okay if your right glute is a little high off the ground. One more breath in. Exhale, bring it to center. I, you guys don't have to turn. I'm gonna turn so you can see. And take your right foot. You can either put it in the crook of your elbow and hold it. You can take your elbows underneath, palms together. If none of that feels quite right, hand to foot, hand to knee, and just a little shake side to side. Oh, hip is here. It's happening. Chest is up. One more each way. Go ahead and come back to center. Release that right foot down. Stretch both legs out. Arms out in front. Exhale. Rounded back. Roll. Feel free to bend your knees so you come all the way onto your back. Feet down. Hands down. Back into bridge. Second time. Up on an inhale, there you go. Upper arms wiggle close. Switch the interlace of your fingers and across of your thumbs. And then change a little bit of something about your feet. Wider, turn out. An extra little push. Five breaths here. Soft movement in your jaw, your nose, your tongue. You might even slide your tongue around in your upper or lower row of teeth. Last breath in. Exhale, unclasp your hands. Wiggle your arms out, roll it down. Pause with your back fully on the floor. Right leg up. Left knee bent, flamingo, and move into your ankles. Point flex. Rolling motion is always welcome. And as you're doing this, your head, your shoulders, your spine, your sacrum are all still on the ground. Good, and then choose where you want your feet. Interlace your fingers, but again, switch the interlace. Switch the cross of your thumbs right below your left knee, breathe in. Exhale, just a little bit of movement to lift yourself up. Exhale, round it back. Come back into that flamingo starting position. Breathe in. Use an exhale. Push your left chin into your hands, and that'll help you lift up. Good. Exhale, round it back. 
Breathe in. Exhale, round it up. And please know if anything ever bothers you, you're always open to skip it and just do something that feels good for your body. One more. Exhale, come up. Hold it up. Left arm on the inside, right arm behind you. Open twist towards your right leg. Yep, so feel your left foot fully on the floor. Breathe in, sit up nice and tall. Exhale, turn your head. Good, one more breath in and out. And then slowly release, cross at your ankles, come forward and into tabletop. Right into barrel rolls, hips to the right, spine to the sky, hips to the left, belly to the floor. Right? I love to imagine that I stuck myself in the inside of a giant Nutella jar and you scrape in all the edges. Right? You're like, oh, there's still some stuff left in there. Should feel good on your hips and your shoulders. Side, ceiling, side, towards the earth. And then try something different with your elbows. Maybe you bend. Maybe you naturally bend so you keep your elbows straight. Slow addition of your neck, slow. Make sure it's thoughtful and kind towards your neck. And then switch directions to the left side, to the ceiling, to the right side, to the floor. Maybe you change how wide or how narrow your knees are. It's going to affect it differently. And when you do make a change, make sure you move slowly so you can notice the difference. Wiggle your way to center. Always an option to take your hands into fists or forearms if you don't like being flexed in your wrists that much. Now, only cat cow in your shoulders. You're going to try and keep the rest of your spine pretty still. So you squeeze your shoulders, heart drops down, puff your shoulders, can't tuck your chin. So just cat cow in your shoulders. Just in your shoulders. Yeah. Notice what it's like to really isolate that part of your body. Open and close your jaw a few times. One more each way. And then center. Now try it just with your middle back. It's kind of difficult. Just with your middle back. So the range of motion may change. So right pretty much at the area at the bottom tips of your shoulder blades. Of course, there could be some movement elsewhere. That's OK. One more middle back and then center. Now just try your lower back. So you're basically just cat cowing your pelvis. Again, a little movement elsewhere, no big thing. And then come to center. Initiate five full rounds of cat cow from your middle back. So middle back starts curling first, and then middle back begins dropping towards the floor, tailbone back, chin forward, eyes up. So instead of going tailbone to neck or neck to tailbone, start from the middle of your body. It's basically where your diaphragm attaches towards your lungs and your ribs. So it's where you have the breath really moving around, but it can feel very tight and sticky. Last two to three rounds of this cat cow from the middle of your body. Doing a great job, everybody. When you're done, come back onto flat hands, tabletop back, walk your knees back. Plank on your knees. Maybe needing to pull your wrist back up your shoulders so you can come through a chaturanga. Pause. Slowly come all the way onto the floor. 
Good. Release your legs straight behind, arms straight behind, palms touch the ground. Shalambhasana, locust pose, forehead on the floor. Your palms and your pelvis stay down. A little lift of everything and make it smaller than you think you should. Smaller. Yeah, and then reach your toes back, reach your crown forward, breathe in. Exhale, lower. Again, inhale, lift a little less than you think you quote unquote should. And then think about being longer. Longer, longer, longer. Good, exhale down. Now, maybe you start to add a hair of height to it as you lift. Reach your toes, reach your crown, and then really find your shoulder blades hugging towards one another. So the fronts of your shoulders go back. Good, one more breath in. Exhale, release. Last one, again, maybe a little extra height, nothing crazy. Think about being longer. Shoulders together, rounding out those sharp edges of your breath. Good, one more inhale. Slowly come down on an exhale. Onto your forearms and elbows, sphinx pose. Pull back through your elbows, lift high into your heart. You can interlace your hands or keep your hands flat, your call. Good, tuck your chin, push through your elbows, and then come up into a forearm plank. Not for long. Slowly shift some energy so you come onto your hands from your forearm plank, and then into your first downward dog. Yay, breathe out. Hands and feet aren't too far away, they're not too close. They're that porridge level, just right. Goldilocks. Five breaths. Inhale and exhale. Eyes are toward your toes or between your upper inner thighs. Starting to slowly walk your big toes till they touch together. Bend at your right knee, so you're back in that flamingo position. Try not to excessively force your left heel closer to the ground. It might naturally happen. And you're just gonna take that right knee out to the side, back to the middle. Out to the side like a dog on a fire hydrant, back to the middle. Now, if your shoulders are like, uh-uh, I need a break, you take this down in the tabletop and do the same thing. Just as great. Little dog on a fire hydrant action, up and down. Ooh, but it doesn't mean it doesn't feel like a very spicy level inside of your hip and around your hip. One to two more. Good, we'll all meet back in downward dog. Breathe in, exhale. Give yourself a moment down in the tabletop back into child's pose. Wider the knees, more release in the hips. The closer the knees, more conserving of your energy. So your call. Maybe you need to support your neck in some way with your hands under your forehead, a block, a blanket, a dog, whatever's there. Breathe in, exhale. Inhale, allow yourself the time and space, tabletop. Good foundation, tucking your toes, rising up through your knees, hovering table, crouching, shifting back, and then moving towards your forward dog. Wider hands, more release in your shoulders. Middle fingers, index fingers can point a little bit out. Start to wiggle your big toes to touch again. Breathe in, breathe out. Put weight on the ball of your right foot as you bend your left knee. So not in the heel of your right foot, the ball of your foot. 
and then start to move open into your left hip. Inhale out, exhale center. Great place to do it in tabletop as well. Out to the side, knees touch together. Again, you're never stuck in one space, especially if it's not working for you today. Take it two to three more times, moving into your hip. Bring it to center, down into table, exhale back into Balasana, child's pose. Reach, reach, reach through your arms. Breathe out through your mouth. Let it relax through your jaw. From your table, or from your child's pose, come up, sit back on your heels, so your knees are still wide, saddle pose. If this bothers your knees, bring your support between your heels and your bum, but you are gonna release your left foot to be in a half squat position. So you're sitting on your right heel with your left foot on the floor. And if, it, if, if this is still like a no-no on your knee, you sit cross-legged, but it can be hard and easy to round your back. So you can also sit cross-legged with your right shin on, with a blanket. Mm -hmm. Left arm on the inside, right arm up and open. Open twist again. And watch how high up your right arm is getting. Some of you, it's really close to your ear. Try to drop it down and reach out with your fingers. Yeah, breathe in. Exhale. Breathe in. Exhale, bring your hands out in front of you so you have a little bit of leverage to lean forward. Come through a squat pose. And if your blanket or pillow is there, you might even bring your heels onto it, and it doesn't have to be your widest squat. I think that's something that maybe studio life has pressured us to, is like really wide squat with your butt touching the floor. That does not feel good for me. Maybe it feels good for you, but maybe you just try that elevation on your heels, feet a little more narrow, and then a little lift of your chest. Doesn't have to be perfect. But you are feeling your thigh bones really plug into the hip socket. One more breath in. Exhale, hands down, lean forward. If you're stepping on the blanket, step off with your right foot. Bring your left shin down and sit back towards your left heel. Right arm on the inside, left arm reaching at a diagonal, but not crowding your ear. Down, yep. Turning your head any direction, breathing. Got a couple more rounds. Okay, you can also lift up. So if you feel too much pressure on your left knee, you can take some of that pressure off. One more breath in, exhale, both hands down. Use a little push into your hands, tuck your left toes, come back into your squat pose. Something under your heels, and you can even come up more to a standing position and then bring it back down. Lean a little bit more weight into your heels. <sighs> Jaw, shoulders. So if you're really used to putting your elbows on your knees, but it makes you look like a little rounded gremlin, pull your elbows down a little bit more. You can also squeeze them in like they're gonna touch so you can release your neck a bit. You can move your chin in towards your chest and then up, rounding through your back. Good, last breath or two. You can always take three. Exhale, hands down, lean forward, Uttanasana forward fold. First one, be gentle, breath out. It may feel good to keep your heels elevated. It may feel better to step your feet flat to the mat. Interlace your fingers back at the ledge of your skull and just a little tuck, chin in, and then neutral. 
chin in, and neutral. And then allowing your elbows wide out to the sides, a little pressure in towards your skull and a little bit of a turn to your head to the left, to the center, and to the right. And you might feel that reverberate in other parts of your spine. So go ahead and slowly. It's a little turn of your head side to side. And then come to center. Release your hands. If you are on a blanket or pillow, step your feet off. Five times halfway lift to forward fold. Inhale, half up. Exhale, all the way down. Notice if you want or need more, bend in your knees. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Two more. One more. Hold from your half position. Push from your heels and come up to stand. Ah, welcome to your standing body. Bend your knees, swim one arm back at a time, and a little bit of a turn also from your belly button, and a little bit of bend from your knees. And if you need a wider base, you separate your feet. Good, no one's doing the freestyle. We're doing the backstroke. The backstroke, yeah. Happy shoulders, happy hips, four corners of the body. Ah. And then center, maybe take both arms back, around, and down. Back, you can have a little cactus in and down. And again, you, you guys all know, I'm only really a fan of doing this motion. This motion is not really gonna do any of us any good, right? So that's why I typically just suggest this back motion. And not because I want to mess with everybody this morning, but bring your feet a little closer together. Feel free to watch first. You're going to go left arm, right leg out to the side and down. And then right arm, left leg out. Now, I don't care what you do with your other arm. So you're going opposite arm, opposite leg, opposite shoulder, opposite hip. Yeah, and now we look like an interpretive dance crew. It's great. If you do feel excessive clicking, just make it smaller. You don't have to take your knee all the way out to the side. <sighs> Notice how you do have to have the element of balance, the focus of your eyes. Everyone looks super steady, so I'm gonna challenge you with a different layer to close your eyes, go slower, maybe smaller, and open your eyes if you feel like you're going to lose it for a second. Oh, there we go. And it's okay to lose it for a second. Or a couple seconds. A couple more times each side, slower. Mm -hmm. Nice. One more time each side. Yeah. The wobbling is good. and then come back to center. I'm just gonna turn so you guys can see, starting to work into reverse namaste, palms together, thumbs towards your back, fingers towards the ground. Step one, let me get a little closer, right? Step one, and it doesn't have to be high up on your middle back, you can keep it low. Take a couple breaths here, and it's really important to take the front of your shoulder back, right? And also down. You can stay right here or start to point your fingers at your actual spine again. Maybe it's more towards your bum or more towards your shoulders. And it's perfectly fine, everybody, to have your palms separated. You don't have to have your palms touching together. Take a couple breaths here, shoulders back without sticking your butt out and your chest forward. Try to stay pretty neutral. Great place to stay, or you can start to move your pinky fingers towards your back. Again, the first step is just your fingertips touching and your palms not even close together. You're gonna to feel this in your forearms. Then you can start to work, whoa, fingers a little closer together, closer together, 
maybe a little wiggle, then you can start to work it higher. But it's not a place or a space that we spend a lot of time in. But dang, do you feel it in your shoulders, your forearms, different sensations in your elbows and your wrists? Yeah. And then one more time, pull the fronts of your shoulders back. So that hug of your shoulder blades together and a little bit down. Breathe in. One more inhale. Exhale. So come out of this, pull your pinkies down towards your bum, separate your palms, and just kind of flick your wrists out to the side. You can move it all around. And then we're going to take that one more time, but with tree pose. So find your tree pose, foot below the knee or above the knee, eyes focused, and then your version of reverse namaste. Fingers pointed down, it's still reverse namaste. Maybe fingers start to point at your back or pinkies start to work up your back. Equal energy of your thigh to your foot, foot to your thigh, palm to palm. Good, last few breaths on this side. Your shoulders, pull them down from your ears. You can even find that by moving your neck right and left. Again, you might feel reverberating sensations elsewhere and then shoulders back, chest open. Try and keep your hands as is as you move your tree pose into the other side. But if you need a helping hand to bring your foot up, you can let it go, move it around, and then come back into it. Good. Right hip opening out to the side. Both shoulders down and both shoulder blades towards one another. And so you don't lose it in your rib cage. When you do pull your shoulder blades together, think about your front ribs pushing back a little bit towards your pinky fingers. Two more breaths. Again, slide your hands down, kind of like you're flicking water away. Whew. Move your wrists. Take it up, shake your feet out, shake your body out. If you do want an interpretive dance, that's always allowed. Just kind of move it around and then come into mountain pose. One salutation, just one. Feet down, inhale, stretch your arms out and up. And you guys know, so you can go at your pace. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Breathe in, lift up halfway. Exhale, your plank. Doesn't matter where your hands are, doesn't matter where your knees are. And then slowly find your way onto your belly using an out breath. Chest opener as you inhale. Low, high, up dog, your call. Exhale, move your way into downward dog or through other postures to get to downward dog. Deep breath. Hands back to feet. Hang down, forward fold. Inhale, come up halfway. And exhale, take it down. Inhale, slow stretch, arms to the side, up to the ceiling. And then exhale, arms float down, mountain pose, eyes open. Just slow down. Move your jaw. And then just walk your hands down your legs and give a little tap. Walk it forward. Bring your knees down. We're going to take about, uh, let's say, three minutes on each side. Yeah, we've got time for three minutes on each side. If you know that this part of your body, like your outer glute, is really feeling it these days because you've been in a chair a lot and you really do want to take pigeon, you're more than welcome to any variation. 
I'm going to take you through a yin posture that's called a water bug. So some kind of padding for your knee. I'm going to point the camera down so you guys can see it. It's like a half, it's like a combo between half frog and sphinx. So it's easiest to start on your belly and forearms. I like to lean over to the left side to put the inner right knee on some cushion. And normally, right, this is one variation of half frog just with your knee out to the side. What we're gonna do is water bug. So you start to walk over, over, over till your right elbow gets real close to your right knee. And I like bending at the elbows, left ear on the hands. So you're getting this lateral compression on the right side and relaxing into your right hip. Water bug. Three minutes. Breathe in and out. So it's a little less effort. It's a little bit more of a giving sensation into the ground. Watch any holding happening, especially in your left shoulder. Feet are relaxed. So try not to get yourself into a wound up position. I'm trying to unwind. Unwind any effort of your glutes, your belly, and your shoulders. Amazing posture to practice deep breathing. to feel the energy of your inhalation and the surrendering of a long exhale. And again, no muscular contraction. For these last few moments, option to add a twist to this, pushing a little bit into your forearms. Left arm's gonna come underneath and you'll just start to roll open. Your right shoulder may not get to the floor, it doesn't have to. So you're taking it into a spinal twist. If your right arm's just hanging out in space and that does not feel productive, put your right hand on your right hip. So it's just less. Kind of that 1960s Barbie arm. Now re-release your glutes, belly and shoulders. Either still in water bug or in a twist. Last breath. Twisted folks. Unwind on your inhale. Everyone come onto your forearms. Walk it back to center. Lean over towards your left leg. Ooh. Come out of it. And I'm going to bring my knees in, come up and over so you can still see on the other side. You're going to be on your right hip now. Easiest to start on your side and then pull your right knee up. So just so some cushion so your inner knee and ankle are happy with you. And again, frog pose, this is where this comes from. And as you start to come down towards the ground, 
right? And if you ever watch a water bug on the surface, how they kind of like do this motion to skid along the top, that's why it's called water bug. So pour your head, wiggle around the sides, it's just gonna be different. And then check back in, glutes, belly, shoulders. And not just the tops of the shoulders, but the upper shoulders close to the neck. Shoulder blades a little lower down on your upper back. Full breath in, full breath out. Same amount of time on this side. Left elbow close to your knee. Doesn't have to touch, could, could also not. And it is very apparent when we're more chest down to the ground, how we breathe. Because you have a little bit more feedback of the floor pushing against either your chest or your belly, or a little bit of both. Watch that right shoulder. You're always welcome to wiggle around. Water bugs definitely don't stay 100% still. Feeling muscle relaxation in your glutes, your abdomen, and all around your shoulders. Welcome to stay, or a little bit of up energy to twist, especially if you did on the other side, right arm, so your right hand comes towards your left knee. Less is gonna be left hand on your glute, outer hip, and just gently starting to roll away from your left knee, twisting. Exhale. <sighs> Wherever you're at, breathing. If you're not in the twisted position, move towards that because from the twist, dragging your left knee over, scooting your hips, so you come supine onto the ground. Ah. Your call, what do you do next? Where do you go? Without any prompting from me, what do you need? Yep. All amazing answers because it's the right answer for you. and then changing up your Shavasana shape today. Butterfly, legs at the wall, Shavasana with your ankles crossed. Just change it up, socks on, sweaters on. Sounds amazing. And if you're not quite ready for Shavasana, if you need one more bridge for your shoulders or a hug of your knee in, Making room for breakfast in your belly, please do. Start to move your way somewhere. Somewhere right and good for your body. Calves on a chair, calves on a couch, calves on a bed, calves on a, a railing, all places to be. 
good couple minutes here. Because this is the magic stuff of the practice. Good time to signal to yourself that you're moving towards that rest and relaxation via a few long out breaths. Give yourself another exhale, dropping into your resting shape. Again, no muscular effort. If there are any sounds in your personal or around your personal space, just let it be a part of the practice. Of acknowledging without attaching. Slow breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. Small amount of movement to begin. Starts to get a little bit bigger, stretching, reaching, yawning. Collecting your limbs in towards your center rolling to your side and then up to sit. And if you're by a wall, you're always welcome to back your spine up. Take your time. You'll start with your fingertips together and then just a few times, feel the length of your fingers touch till your palms and your thumbs come down below your sternum. And then you're just gonna come back up, let go of your palms just a few times, drag it down, drag it up, eyes opened or closed. Drag it down as your palms separate, excuse me, as your palms come together. It really doesn't matter either way. And then land somewhere with your hands together, somewhere towards your heart. Breathing into all parts of yourself. Thanking yourself for the awareness of your body, your mental state, your emotional state and how your breath weaves between all three. And with three breaths together, inhale, breathe out.
Big breath out. Thank you all for taking the time this morning. It's always a gift to guide you. Namaste. Hope everyone has a lovely weekend. Reminder, no, no class with Julie next Thursday night, Christmas Eve. No class with me Christmas morning. We'll be making pancakes, but we're, Julie's still having class New Year's Eve at 5.30 and I will be here Friday, New Year's Day, 2021. So good to see everyone again. If you have any questions, I'm here. And if not, bop on into your, your I was gonna say Thursday, it's Friday. <laughs> hey, Jane. Bye. Take care. Bye, Jan, bye, Larry. Bye, Candace. Bye, Duncan. <laughs>